1500 years ago, what we call Iran today was home to the Sasanian Empire, also known as the Second Persian Empire. The Persian Empire began around 559 BCE and this civilization adhered to Zoroastrianism, also known as the Parsi religion. By observing these ruins, one can estimate the advanced state of this civilization in architecture, arts, and science. Around 632 CE, Arabs invaded the region. Everything was plundered, and by around 654 CE, the Persian territory was almost entirely under their control. This initiated the process of Islamization in this region. Some embraced the new religion, some were killed, and others left their ancestral homeland in search of new places. In the 8th century, a similar group arrived in Sanjan, Gujarat. Seeking asylum from the local Hindu king, Jadi Rana. An interesting story related to this episode is narrated by the 16th century, Parsi priest Bahman Kaikabad in his book, Kisi Sanjan. When the Parsis reached out to Raja Jadav Rana seeking asylum, Raja Jadav Rana gestured toward a vessel filled to the brim with milk, conveying that his realm was already full. In response, one of the Parsi priests added a pinch of sugar to the milk, symbolizing their promise not to overflow but to contribute positively to the lives of the people. Jadi Rana then inquired about their religious customs, and the Parsi priest recited 15 Sanskrit verses, explaining the ways of Parsi life. Satisfied with their answers, Jadi Rana imposed three conditions, learning Gujarati, accepting the local dress, sari for females, and relinquishing their weapons. The Parsis accepted these conditions, marking the beginning of the Parsi community's history in India. Among these, a family later settled in Navsari, Gujarat. They were deeply rooted in Parsi traditions, maintained their culture for 25 generations by performing religious ceremonies in fire temples. In this family, Jamsheji Tata was born on March 3, 1839, the personality who laid the foundation of the Tata group in 1868. Today, the Tata group encompasses nearly 100 subsidiaries across sectors such as aviation, finance, steel, chemicals, consumer products, energy, information systems, advanced systems, textiles, automotive, construction projects, and hospitality, with 29 publicly listed companies. Notably, Jem Sheji Tata was not the first in his family to venture into business. For generations, this Parsi family, consisting of priests, dedicated their lives to worshipping in their Ajiari, Darimihar, or Adishpuram. The term Adish holds significance as Parsis are followers of fire worship, and in Persian, Adish translates to fire. Nasirwanji, his father, was the initial Tata member to break away from the traditional priesthood and venture into business. He started his career by buying and selling opium. At that time, opium trade was legal. In fact, this was the year 1850 when Western countries were establishing their dominance over the world. War was common during this time, and opium was given to injured soldiers to relieve pain and prepare them for war, which greatly increased the demand for opium. J. N. Tata was then studying in Navsari, while his father, Nasirwanji Tata, involved in business in Bombay, he had earned huge profits in the opium trade. Later, J. N. Tata joined Elphinstone College in Mumbai and finished his education there when he was 20 years old. Initially, J. N. Tata worked with his father for nine years. This was a period when his father faced failures even in his most profitable business, the opium trade. Meanwhile, in 1868, Jamseji set up a trading company with a startup capital of 21,000 rupees, today's Tata Group. In these 155 years, the Tata Group has seen a lot and done a lot, the leaders of the Tata Group kept changing, but it maintained its credibility and productivity. Let us see how Tata Group, from a company of 21,000 rupees, became one of the largest multinational conglomerate of India today. After the establishment of the company in 1868, the first 20 years were challenging, it was not at all the right time for an Indian to enter into business, as British rule was dominant in India, and the echoes of the 1857 war were still fresh. In 1869, Jamseji buys a bankrupt oil mill in Chinchpakli, Mumbai, and converts it into a textile mill, from here he enters the textile industry. Meanwhile, in 1871, 
he has to go to Britain for company work, where he went to Lancashire Cotton Mill. Observing it, he realizes the capacity and possibility of textile business, after coming to India he sells Chinchpakli Mill to a local cotton trader at a good price. He realized that the British monopoly in the Indian textile business could be challenged. At that time, most industrialists were choosing Mumbai for their businesses, the business mind in him thinks that cotton farming areas, easy access to railway junctions, and an adequate supply of water and fuel can increase the chances of success. Keeping all this in mind, in 1874, J. N. Tata established a textile mill, the Empress Mill, in Nagpur. This is Tata Group's first self-established business. J. N. Tata aspired to enhance the city of Bombay, the place that had contributed significantly to his and his father's business. Turning his dream into reality the Taj Mahal Hotel was inaugurated on December 16, 1903. This luxury hotel chain stands as one of the most formidable and recognized hotel brands globally today. In 1904, Jamseji Tata, who played a pivotal role in reshaping the landscape of Indian industry, passed away, his son Dorabji Tata took over as the chairman. Known as the Man of Steel, Dorabji Tata pioneered the Industrial Revolution in India, following the path shown by J. N. Tata. In 1907, the Tata Iron and Steel Company, now known as Tata Steel, was established in Sakshi. Even before commencing production, the Tata Company establishes hospital in the area. Perhaps these unique qualities have contributed to maintaining the popularity of the Tata Company over the long run. The first international office of Tata Group was set up in London in 1907. In 1909, thanks to the efforts of the Tata Group, the Indian Institute of Science was established in Bangalore. For its creation, land and funds were provided by Krishna Raja Wadiyar IV, the Maharaja of Mysore. The Tata Group collaborates to support buildings, equipment, and infrastructure. The first batch arrived in 1911. In 1910, Dorabji Tata inaugurated the first hydroelectric plant in western India, marking the beginning of Tata power. In 1912, the location of the Tata steel plant in Sakshi was transformed into India's first planned industrial city. In 1919, its name was changed to Jamshedpur. In 1917, Tata Group entered the FMCG sector with the establishment of Tata Oil Mills Company, Tomco, producing popular soap brands like Hammam and Modi. The company was eventually sold to Hindustan Liver in 1984. In 1919, following the demise of J.N. Tata's younger son, Ratanji Tata, the Tata Trusts emerged as per the will. Starting with an initial fund of 8 million rupees, this trust, in the present day, contributes to various development programs like rural development, education, health, arts, crafts, and culture by granting funds. In 1920, through the efforts of Dorabji Tata, India fielded its first Olympic team at the Antwerp Olympic Games. In 1924, the Tata Group sponsored the team participating in the Paris Olympic Games. In the year 1932, India marks a significant leap in the field of aviation as J.R.D. Tata pilots the first flight from Karachi to Mumbai. This event marks the birth of Tata Airlines, later renamed Air India. In 1932 itself, Sir Dorabji Tata donates his entire wealth, 10 million rupees at that time, in memory of his wife. He establishes the Lady Tata Memorial Trust and the Dorabji Tata Trust. Unfortunately, he passes away in the same year. In 1938, J.R.D. Tata assumes the most influential role within the Tata Group. At the age of 34, he becomes the youngest chairman in the history of the Tata Group. In the year 1939, Tata Chemicals is born in the remote coastal area of Mithapur. In 1941, the Tata Memorial Hospital was established by the Sir Dorabji Tata Trust. This marks a significant effort in India for the treatment of cancer, ensuring that cancer treatment reaches all individuals. In 1945, as the Tata Group rapidly expanded its business endeavors, the Tata Engineering and Locomotive Company Limited was established. In 2003, its name was changed to Tata Motors. In 1945, J.R.D. Tata and Homi Babha established the Tata Institute of Fundamental Research, marking a crucial advancement in the field of science for India. In 1947, India gained independence. 
After independence, in 1952, the Tata Group introduces India's first beauty and cosmetic brand, Lakme. In 1984, Lakme, along with Tata Oil Mills Company, is sold to Hindustan Unilever. In 1954, the Tata Group introduces the popular air conditioning brand Voltas. In the same year, Tata Engineering and Locomotive Company Limited collaborates with Germany's Daimler-Benz to venture into the commercial vehicle sector. Within six months, the first Tata Mercedes-Benz truck is manufactured. In 1962, the Tata Group ventured into the beverage industry with Tata Finley, later transformed into Tata Tea and currently Tata Global Beverages. In 1968, the Tata Group celebrated its centenary. The same year witnessed the establishment of Tata Consultancy Services for Software Services, which has now become a global enterprise operating in 46 countries. In 1969, J.R.D. Tata and Dr. Jamshet Babha founded the National Center for the Performing Arts to preserve India's rich cultural heritage. In 1982, the Taj Group acquired the St. James Court in London, expanding its global presence. Two years before this, the Tata Group had opened its first international hotel in Yemen. In 1983, Tata Chemicals introduced India's first iodine-enriched branded salt, Tata Salt. In 1984, Titan Industries was established through a joint venture with the Tamil Nadu Industrial Development Corporation, marking the entry of the Tata Group into the watch market. After achieving success in commercial vehicles, the Tata Group entered the private vehicle sector in 1991 as Telco. In the same year, Tata Sierra was launched, followed by Tata Estate in 1992. Telco is now known as Tata Motors. After JRD Tata, Rutan Tata assumed the position of chairman in 1991. Following Rutan Tata's leadership, the Tata Group began to establish a strong international presence. In 1992, Titan started the Raga series and, in 1998, launched FastTrack, becoming an iconic youth brand. In 1994, the Tata Group entered the Indian jewelry market with the brand Tunishk. In 1998, Telco brought the Tata Indica to the market, the first car completely designed and manufactured in India. Also in the same year, India's first SUV, the Tata Safari was launched. In the year 2000, Tata T acquires the renowned British Tetley Group, a company with a history of 160 years. Tetley is now the second largest tea brand globally. Tata AIA in 2000, and Tata AIG in 2001, Tata Group enters the insurance sector with these two joint ventures. In 2002, Tata Group acquired a majority stake in VSNL, and the foundation of Tata Communications is laid, today it is the global leader in network solutions, mobility and IoT. In 2003, TCS became a billion-dollar revenue Indian software company. The following year, in 2004, TCS entered the public market with one of the largest IPOs, raising about $1.2 billion. Tata Motors acquired the heavy vehicles unit of Dewoo Motors of South Korea in 2004, and it is listed on the New York Stock Exchange in the same year. In 2006, Tata Sky was launched, marking the entry into the direct-to-home sector. In the same year, Tata Group established Chroma, a multi-brand outlet for electronics and durables. In 2007, the Tata Group achieved a significant milestone by acquiring the British steel company Chorus, now known as Tata Steel Europe, making Tata Steel the second largest steel producer in Europe. In 2008, Tata Motors introduced the Tata Nano. The same year, it acquired the British luxury car manufacturer Jaguar Land Rover. In 2011, Rutan Tata inaugurated the Tata Medical Center in West Bengal, establishing a specialized facility for cancer treatment. In 2012, Tata Global Beverages Limited formed a joint venture with the international coffee company Starbucks, resulting in the rapid expansion of Starbucks stores over the next five years. Tata Group launched Air Asia India in a joint venture with Air Asia Berhad in 2014, taking a new leap in the field of aviation, Taking this further, in 2015, Tata Group launched Vistara in a joint venture with Singapore Airlines. In the same year, Vistara makes a record of flying 1 million customers. In 2017, TCS and Cornell Tech joined forces to establish the Tata Innovation Center, 
focusing on advancing academic and industry research. In 2018, Tata Steel entered a joint venture with the German company ThyssenKrupp, providing a new direction for steel production in Europe. The same year, TCS became the first Indian IT company to achieve a market capitalization of $100 billion. In 2019, Tata Global Beverages and Tata Chemicals merged to form a new entity, Tata Consumer Products Limited. In 2019, Tata became the fastest growing company among the top 25 companies in India. Tata Motors launches India's electric SUV, Nexon EV, in January 2020. In 2020, Tata Group provided a contribution of 1,500 rupees crore to fight against COVID-19. Tata Trust helps in meeting the immediate needs through equipment and hospitals. In 2021, Tata Digital Limited, wholly owned by Tata Sons, acquired a majority stake in e-commerce grocery giant Big Basket and online healthcare marketplace 1MG. Additionally, it invested in CureFit Healthcare. In 2021 itself, Tata Group and TCS collaborated with Bharti Airtel to create Made in India 5G network solutions. In the same year, Air India, which remained under the management of the government for 68 years, came back to the Tata Group on January 27, 2022, after Tata Sons won the bid in 2021. In 2022, Tata Group announces title sponsor for the 2022 and 23 Indian Premier League. In 2022, Tata Digital Limited launched its super app, Tata New. In November 2022, Tata Group combined its two airlines, Air India and Vistara, making it the largest international carrier and the second largest domestic carrier in India. Today, Tata Group operates in more than 100 countries, employing over 1 million people. Its combined market capitalization is more than 300 billion US dollars. The remarkable journey of the Tata Group is a testament to the vision and perseverance of its founder Jumseji Tata. Since its beginning in the 19th century, the conglomerate has carved its name in history with its business ventures, worker welfare work, and service works, which is why people love the Tata Group. In the 21st century, Tata Group is challenging global norms by dominating diverse industries. We hope the Tata Group will continue to shape industries, uplift communities, and inspire the generations to come. I hope you liked the video, don't forget to share it with your friends and family, and subscribe to the channel, see you again next time, with a new interesting video, till then Tata.